So I thought the best way to show you the features and benefits of the TU701 is simply to walk you through how I teach a basic refrigeration cycle as an instructor in a residential heat pump class. So the first thing I want to point out is the major components of the refrigeration system. Like in all refrigeration systems, we have our compressor, we have our outdoor coil, we have our indoor coil, we have a metering device, but now we also want to introduce the reversing valve. So if we're going to walk through the standard cycle, what we'd want to show students is simply that out of the back of the compressor here, we have a discharge line, and in that discharge line is high pressure, high temperature, superheated vapor. That superheated vapor travels into the bottom of the reversing valve. Now in all reversing valve systems, all four-way valves, the discharge line is always connected to the bottom port in the center of the valve. From that bottom port, the gas can either be shot over to the right side, left side, or the right, excuse me, left side or the right. So in this case here, because this is the outdoor coil in the AC cycle, we're going to go over here to the left, and the highly superheated vapor will go into the top of the outdoor coil. Now this is also called in an air conditioning system, the condenser coil. That gas as it enters is highly superheated, so it's going to go through a process where it's desuperheated, which means cooled down to a saturation temperature, and then it's saturated, which means we start to turn it into a liquid, and then by the time that liquid runs down to the bottom of this coil, it comes out subcooled, which means it's below its saturation temperature. When the liquid comes out the bottom, students can easily see that there's liquid through the extended sight glass, and then that liquid travels down and out and through the check valve. Now the check valve on a heat pump system is designed to allow flow in only one direction. And that flow in this case goes this direction into the liquid line and through a sight glass with a moisture indicator so we can see if the refrigerant's dry and then through our biflow filter dryer. Out of the biflow filter dryer, it goes through the liquid line again and now it can't go through this check valve because this one only allows flow this direction. So it has to go down through the uh, metering device which is a capillary tube down here and then into the indoor coil. Now again the students can see that the refrigerants going through the extended sight glass is a saturated mixture of liquid which means it's boiling and you can see that refrigerant rapidly changing state and it goes out the other side of the sight glass and into the bottom of the indoor coil. When it enters the indoor coil the refrigerant is obviously cold and it's absorbing heat from the surrounding air and it boils that refrigerant away till it turns to a superheated vapor and that superheated vapor comes out here in a suction line and goes into the uh, reversing valve. Now, although this is a suction line, a lot of times also you hear it called the vapor line because this line always contains vapor uh, no matter where it goes. So that vapor then goes through and it goes up and into the suction line. This is really the only true suction line on a heat pump system and goes into the liquid accumulator. The accumulator is designed to capture any liquid that could possibly enter the compressor. And this is a very com important component of a heat pump system because when we reverse refrigerant flow, the evaporator that's completely full of liquid uh, would empty out and it'll empty into this accumulator. What we don't want to do is we don't want that refrigerant to end up going into the compressor and slugging the compressor. It would cause damage to the pistons and valves. So the accumulator is designed to prevent that. Also the accumulator is engineered so that it can return the oil back to the compressor for lubrication. So it would go in the accumulator, go back out of the accumulator as a vapor, and that vapor would then travel back and go into the compressor. Now, you can see easily your students can tell several things. Number one, we have a low side pressure gauge that's got an integrated temperature scale for 134A, so we can easily tell the saturation temperature of the refrigerant in the evaporator coil over here. And we can see that when we look at this, this pressure, it corresponds to the temperature of this coil. And we also have a high side pressure gauge that corresponds to the temperature of the outdoor coil. So this is very easy to walk the students through step by step and show them how a heat pump differs from a typical air conditioning system.